going from the Glock 45 MOS to this, you can see the thickness. There is definitely a difference. Welcome back. I hope everyone is having a great day as always. Currently, it is raining outside. So that means I finally have time to do a gun review on this channel. It has been way too long since I've done a review. And if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Jeff and this is where I share my personal passions with you guys on occasion. My passion for watches, my passion for cars. This is my 2023 CA hardtop convertible special edition 70th anniversary. And yes, that is a handful. So there's plenty of content on the channel of this car if you'd like to check it out. But today we're talking about my passions for guns. In specific, we're gonna be talking about the Hellcat Pro. This is a CCW variant, at least for me, it's gonna be chambered in a nine millimeter. Having said that, I will provide timestamps for the unboxing, for the review, and we're gonna also do a slight comparison to the Glock 45 MOS. This is currently my CCW. So if you guys got any thoughts on Hellcat Pro, uh, any experiences, please drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, also with the uh, Glock 45 MOS, are you still carrying that as well? Uh, I need some thoughts on some uh, IWB, uh, inside the waistband holsters. I currently don't have one. So if you have any thoughts on that, I greatly appreciate it. But that being said, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, and let's get on with this review. See you there. And without further ado, let's take a look at the Hellcat Pro and what it has to offer. And let's see what we have in the box. What's in the box, what's in the box. Now, interesting enough, um, you would think that inside here is a soft case and you would be correct. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's see what the Hellcat Pro gear has to offer. So you'll have one pistol, three extra mags, and you have a soft case. However, it's not the only soft case. <laughs> I'll explain that in just a second. So diving into the box, it's going to be a little unexpected, at least for me. Uh, the first thing you notice is you do get a soft case, as we mentioned before. And look, there's another hard case within a hard case. And that follows suit with the soft case. Again, you have your Springfield Armory logo. You have your option for a patch, maybe American flag, maybe the agency you work for, or don't use this at all for your firearm, maybe a medical pouch and put a medical label here. It's up to you what you want to do. But following suit, you get a soft case and then you get another soft case. So you get two hard cases and two soft cases. You know what? I think they might be onto something here. So let's dive into this in one second. We'll see what's inside here. But diving into your larger soft case, you've got plenty of room for your firearm, maybe some notepads, pens, but the main compartment will be for your firearm. So this will stow away your mags. You can put other gear inside here, primary firearm in here. It all depends on how you want to use this. But all in all, the bag feels like it's pretty good quality. And look at that. You could also put your information here if you choose to. Uh, I would guess that if you want to put maybe uh, your blood type or something like that, your name, should you be at the range, obviously you should have your medical gear stored away with you at some other point. But Maybe that's something you want. So if something does happen to you at the range, God forbid, uh, they will have that information here. It's just an idea of what you could do. Having said that, I highly recommend you have some type of medical gear uh, with all the necessities with you at the range at all times. Just my opinion. Don't forget, you put a tourniquet in here as well with your medical gear. So first soft case. And then second soft case. So this is what kind of threw me off. Uh, again, you have your logo for Springfield Armory. We're looking at the Hellcat Pro and you have your firearm, which is completely unexpected of how they set this up, but I think it's pretty cool. So as always, first things first, mag is empty. Let's do a safety check and firearm is empty. Everything is clear. So let's dive into this uh, in two seconds. I wanna take a closer look at this smaller soft case and then we'll dive into the rest of the box and then we'll dive into the firearm. So with your soft case, you have one compartment. So you're probably asking yourself, what in the world is that one compartment for? Well, you can stow away a mag uh, if you choose to have it loaded or not loaded. It's up to you, but it will fit plus your firearm. So if you wanna have this around your house, obviously do it in a safe manner according to your laws, but it's this nice little small discreet bag 
Minus the logo saying it's Springfield Armory. Somebody will probably catch on to that. But I do appreciate the fact that they provided this with the uh, Springfield Armory Pro uh, kit. So let's dive into the box and then we'll see what else it has to offer. So take a closer look inside. As we can see, it comes with a mag loader. Now, will this work? Yes, but I would prefer to use the mag lua if that's how it's pronounced. I will put a picture right here. Uh, if you see my other videos, that is the mag loader of choice for me. It works phenomenal. Uh, it's gonna come with your traditional lock. And of course it's gonna have Springfield Armory as far as a logo. Uh, these are good for rifle cases or anything you wanna lock up. Uh, I always, always use these. So, can never have enough locks. These are steel mags. And as you can tell, you get a total of four mags with the Hellcat Pro, which is what makes this a little different. Uh, between the option of having a soft case, I can always appreciate more mags. So steel mags, pretty awesome to have this in the kit. So taking a closer look at what else this box has, you'll have an envelope that says Hellcat, and you should have some verbiage in here as far as operational safety manual. I always, always recommend everybody check these out. I'm always curious to see how they have these laid out as far as uh, their burrage, maybe some pictures. And as you can see, it has a complete partsless breakdown or bill of materials, however you want to pronounce that. So oh, upper and lower assemblies throughout the package will be described in this SOP. And I really do appreciate the pictures. And of course, how you break down your firearm, uh, your leverage you want to put on your trigger, which is double bladed, we'll discuss that in a minute, and your precautions. So pretty cool that they include this. You're gonna have some stickers, Springfield Armory, <laughs> rifle case, rifle case. That guy at the range, it has like a hundred stickers on his rifle case. Last thing in the box, Springfield provided their testing for this particular firearm. And you can see the distance here, and this is the results. I think this is pretty good for what this gun is designed for. I wouldn't complain about that at all. This is not gonna be a competition pistol. It's not gonna be a home defense pistol, but these rounds would suffice if I ever had to use this uh, firearm in a home defense. Now, will this gun shoot uh, this accurate when we get a hold of it? Time will tell, we will see. Obviously, I'll definitely let you guys know. So let's dive further into the Springfield Hellcat Pro. I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions. And as always, the first thing we're gonna do Again, is a safety check, make sure everything is clear, nothing's in the chamber, and nothing is in the mag. The first thing that I noticed when picking up this firearm is the weight. So it's right around 21 ounces, and it feels absolutely phenomenal in the hand. The stippling uh, on the grip is absolutely phenomenal. So it's not too aggressive, uh, for me at least. Uh, if you notice right here, you're gonna have slight bump outs for your fingers a closer look at that and it's just enough it's not like the previous uh generations of the glock where it was very intrusive as far as your fingers some people liked it some people didn't i did not but it is just ever so slightly on the bump outs as far as the grooves now taking a closer look at the beaver tail it is just enough it's pretty aggressive for me it allows the webbing on my hand to get pretty high up on a purchase and when I have my placement of my hand as far as shooting, my thumb falls perfectly in line with the stippling as they have it laid out right here. It's a slight little indent, but that is what that's for. So if you are new to shooting and you have your placement there as far as your thumb, that's what it's for. Now, why did I purchase the Springfield Hellcat Pro? Uh, this is going to potentially be my concealed carry firearm. I say potentially because we haven't fired it yet. Uh, I usually put at least a thousand rounds or more through my firearms before I decide to carry. But with an overall weight of about 21 ounces, I think the barrel is right around 3.4, somewhere around there as far as off the top of my head. Uh, it should be the perfect size. Speaking of which, this firearm is very, very thin when you compare it to something like a Glock. In this case, this is the Glock 45 MOS. And let's do a safety check on this firearm as well. There is no round in chamber and there is no mag. So this is my current CCW, and this is a Glock 45, which basically means is a Glock 19 upper and a full size lower. So going from the Glock 45 MOS to this, you can see the thickness. There is definitely 
a difference, right? So that's definitely gonna be a lot easier to carry. And obviously from beaver tail down, you can see that the grip is shorter. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison as far as length. So there is a big difference. Now, how is this gonna feel when I'm carrying it compared to the Glock 45 MOS? That is something we're going to find out very, very soon. So working our way to the trigger, it's gonna look very, very similar to the Glock. You have this little blade that's located right inside here. This is your safety. So if you don't pull this blade, this trigger will not engage. If you pull the blade and the trigger, it engages. So that is one of the safety measures for this firearm. So again, pull both and it'll engage. Having said that, I would guess this trigger is going to be right around five pounds, maybe four and a half. I'm not for sure. We'll go ahead and do a trigger pull and find out. But you want a heavier trigger pull, in my opinion, for CCW or even for home defense. You want to absolutely make sure that you are pulling that trigger uh, should you ever have to to protect your life and do not have an accidental discharge with your firearm. Uh, the lighter the trigger pull, that possibly could happen, especially if you're not trained with firearms. Uh, case in point, if you have something like the uh, CZ Shadow 2 Orange or even the Green. I mean, the Green has a trigger pull of less than two pounds. So, yeah. So, this is the kind of trigger you want. As far as lag, you're going to have a good amount of distance as far as lag. And then there's your wall. There's your brake. Reset, it's right there, very audible. So you're gonna know, right? Here's your wall, reset. And there's your wall. But there is a lot of lag. Now there's not a lot of grittiness. If you ever have a trigger pull like the FN509, while you're pulling the trigger, you'll feel some grittiness. I'm not feeling that in here. It's pretty smooth, but there is a good amount of lag. Now that is, for me, perfect for a CCW. Again, you wanna make sure you're pulling this for the right reason. You don't wanna accidentally discharge. When you're looking at the Glock 45 OS, there's a little bit less lag before you hit the wall. Not much, but a little bit. So maybe they can tune it a little bit more on that trigger. Uh, to me, it's not gonna to matter too much. As far as your rail, you're gonna have an option for light. If you choose to add a light on this, that's completely up to you. I carry a light on all my firearms, and I know that that can be a very sensitive subject for some, but we're not gonna discuss that in this review. But for me, I will put a light on here. I do not know which light as of yet. So if you guys have any recommendations, uh, recommendations for a light or uh, for a holster for this, let me know. Um, again, it's gonna be inside the waistband. Uh, I have not chosen holster as of yet. Please let me know what you guys are using. Uh, that would greatly appreciate it. So, as far as your front serrations, they're not very, very aggressive. Now, is that gonna matter for you? And you also have serrations in the rear. Um, that's gonna depend, depend on your style of shooting. Some people like doing front press checks. Some people do not. I know it's a very debatable uh, topic. Again, I don't wanna discuss that in this video, but for me, I don't mind doing front press checks. But I think they could be a little more aggressive. Is it a deal breaker for myself? Uh, no. If you're looking at the Glock 45 MOS, it is definitely got more of a purchase and a lot easier to do your front press checks. Obviously this is a larger firearm, but I think they could have been a little more aggressive on this design. Again, not a deal breaker. It's not a huge deal whatsoever, but something to point out. Front sight is going to be in tritium. Now, this is something I absolutely love. Um, let's see if we can get a better look. Hard to get the focus, but yeah. So my eye picks up green very well. Uh, with your horseshoe rear sight, which is not in tritium, it just brings that front sight in very, very well. So obviously it's gonna depend on your eyes and what you're used to, but I think this tritium front sight is absolutely spot on. Um, Again, that's really gonna be up to you. Now this does have an RMR cutout or some kind of uh, red dot if you choose to put this on there. It's gonna be a mini red dot, obviously because of the thickness of this. Uh, case in point, if you look at the Glock 45 MOS, yeah, you can definitely see a regular RMR be on this. So this would be 
a mini uh, reflex light of some type. If you have not shot with the RMR, I highly, highly recommend you train your butt off with one first before you decide it to put one on your firearm. Maybe go to buddies, uh, go to the range, and maybe rent a gun before you do so. It is a lot, takes a lot more training to shoot with a red dot than it does with irons. But in my belief, or personal opinion that is, I would train with iron sights first. Uh, always learn the basics first. And with the magic of YouTube, this firearm has been disassembled. Uh, we're looking at the lower assembly, as we discussed before. Again, just to recap, you have your stippling, which is pretty good. This is going to be your mag release. It's very positive as far as attention. Your mag will come out pretty easily when applying the mag into the firearm. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way they designed this. It's not very intrusive. It's not sticking out way too far. I believe you can switch this out so it is ambi. And if you look at the rails, very thick. It's going to be steel. And of course, this gun has not been fire, fired as of yet. But this is going to be your lower assembly. And as you expect, this is extremely light. Again, total weight is right around 21 ounces. So taking a closer look at the upper assembly, you have dual captured recoil springs, and this will help negate some of the muzzle rise in the firearm. Now, obviously that's also gonna come down to training. If you don't have the proper grip or the proper training, you will have muzzle rise and your ejection patterns could be quite awful, but this will definitely help. And as we can see, this is going to be your striker safety right here and all the machining looks very very well high quality as you would expect taking a closer look at the barrel this is hammer forge 3.7 inch as far as the barrel i think that's what it is hey, guys let me know i know you will if i'm wrong uh your feed ramps are polished which is something i do greatly appreciate uh, obviously taking a first look so far i don't see anything that's obvious as far as concern so first impressions so far the design of the hellcat pro i am pretty impressed the feel, the weight, everything so far looks very, very impressive. And of course, I appreciate the extra mags with the Hellcat Pro. Uh, will it be replacing my Glock 45 MOS? Uh, that is to be determined. We'll see how this thing is going to shoot uh, in the near future. So stay tuned for a full review on this Hellcat Pro. And we will see if the Glock 45 MOS is going to be replaced.